Hello and welcome to another Lay and Play tech video. Today we're going to be looking at a Fenner pump, which is a basic hydraulic pump that can be found on multiple different pieces of equipment, forklift trucks, farm equipment, and that kind of thing. that are a cheap alternative to the more expensive chrome branded pumps that we get from the USA. They will do the job. They're obviously not as refined as the, the modern pumps, but I found this pump on Facebook Marketplace locally for about 65 pounds. They're really basic, they're really agricultural. They don't look pretty, they don't work as quick, but if you want to hit that switch and you want that hydraulic power and you want to lift and drop and you don't want airbags, this is a potential alternative to the other branded manufacturers that there are on the market. And essentially, as you'll see when we strip the pump down, you'll see that the pump is basically the same layout, the same setup. The motors are basically the same 12 volt motor. There's a block, there's a pump head, there's a tank. And you could convert these pumps. You can get rid of a lot of the stuff that they come with to run them on a car. And the interesting thing about Fenner pumps, they're originally a British brand set up 160 years ago by a chap way up north in Hull. And over the years, they developed their product lines. I think they uh, originated in uh, fabrics and belts and, and polymers. And they merged with a company called Stone, hence where a lot of our American um, viewers will recognize Fenner Stone or Fenner Fluid Power. They had a few different names, I think it's SPX now. But essentially the pumps stayed pretty much the same through the 80s, 90s, noughties and now. And you can buy this, the basic pumps brand new off the shelf. You can still buy all the replacement parts for them. They're a great cheap alternative to spending 2,000 pounds or, or however many thousand dollars on a set kit. And if you want to get into hydraulics and low riders, then this could provide a, a perfect alternative to you spending stacks of cash. So we're going to get into the video now. We're going to look at the pump, strip it down, draw up some comparisons and see what makes it tick. So here it is, Fenner Hydraulic Power Units. This was found on a farm locally. I think it was being used on a forklift truck or a or a JCB or something along those lines, but essentially it looks very similar to the hydraulic pumps that you'll see on most lowrider bills because a lot of hydraulic pumps from the modern era are based on this style pump. So we're going to bench test it. I'm going to stick a battery and a couple of leads on it and see what it does, see if it spins up because I don't know if it works. And then I'm going to start taking it apart. I don't know what this is. There's this huge valve on the side i don't know whether it's got reverse acting it's got two ports on it i'm guessing one's flow and one's return there's another port there and then there's two ports in the side too let's uh let's get a battery on it so as you can see all the original wiring still on here a lot of these wires would have been controlled so the equivalent of your switch wire to whatever controls were on whatever piece of equipment this pump was operating on before it was stripped off for whatever reason. Maybe it was faulty or maybe the, the truck was stripped and scrapped and this was just a spare. So typically you've got, this is a 12 volt pump. So this would have been a 12 volt live to a 12 volt solenoid and then to your 12 volt battery uh, motor terminal. And then you've got another earth terminal from this other post which isn't common on modern hydraulic pumps. They tend to use the, the body of the, the block as the earthing point. But on this, there is a earth. So essentially to get this to run, we'll strip off the solenoid and all this wiring, and we'll just run a straight 12 volt terminal to this post here and uh, a negative 12 volt terminal to this post here. That should make the motor spin, and then we'll get some splattering out of these two pores. So I'm just going to go ahead and strip all that down.
Right, so I've got some battery terminals. Just some crappy eBay purchases. Possibly the worst battery terminals I've ever spent any money on. For some reason, these terminals, as you tighten them up, they just come off. They are shoddy. And then you need one terminal for your live and one terminal for your earth. So let's bang the earth on now. Just be careful not to short out across these terminals because it will go bang if you uh, accidentally work out. So that's going to go down to that terminal there. I hope you can see it with the camera at the angle that it's at. I'm just going to put a nut on that one. That's where I'm going to touch my positive. So this could get pretty sketchy. Fire extinguishers at the ready, people. Wow, this thing is awful. Look at this. That is not good. So that's the airphone. Okay, that's so bad. <laughs> Stay on, stay on for long enough. And this is where it gets sketchy because this is where everything becomes live. These are obviously just some scrap bits of cable that I've got. And some old builds that have been stripped over the years. Let's just keep that out of the way from you. Getting towards sweaty bum time. Right, okay, so that's live. So I'm just going to put that there because I don't want to get soaked if it does spin up. So now it's just a case of touching this on that turn over and seeing what happens. So it does something. It does something. It doesn't sound very excited. I don't know if that's the battery or what. She is working. It smells a little bit like an old scale extra. Now we know that it sort of works. It kind of works. It makes a noise. No fluid came out, but I don't think there's any fluid in the tank. So let's just continue to strip this down. Get this scary ass big battery out of the way. Don't need that anyway. It's gone forever. Get rid of these bits of cable. They can go straight in the bin. Back for the time being. Let's have a quick look inside, see if it does have any fluid in it. Before I take the tank off, I make a mess everywhere. Just using my little retaining bucket. Turn it upside down. Ooh, look at that. It kind of looks like the fact they're using KFC chicken gravy. Look at that. Ooh, there's all kinds of mayonnaise and gunk in there. It looks horrendous. So yeah, that does not look pretty. So that might be the reason why she's not working too well. Let's get that tank off. Let's get some rags. Now this is one of the things that you'll notice is it's significantly beefed up on the USA spec pumps. They tend to have a, an end plate and long rods instead of these little nuts and that's mainly because of the increase in pressure that's generated with the modern pumps that could easily rip these tanks off that's those four nuts off and normally to separate the tank all it takes is a little bit of pressure as you can see that gap starting to open up See if we've got a screwdriver just to give it a little bit of a jimmy. See if that'll help it off. There you go. Wow, that is horrendous in there. I don't know if you can see it, but it stinks. It's like mayonnaise. Jeez, whoa. It just smells rank. That is your standard pump head you pick up which has got a filter on it and these are probably your returns 
I don't know why the pump was making that sound, but it did sound like it was struggling. So maybe there's a, a, a bad gear or it could be the motor, but we'll continue to strip it down and check. Let me just clean this disgusting oil up before we go any further. That is gross. Basically, the same as with an engine, water has got into the tank somehow and you've caused the oil to emulsify, which is probably why the pump hasn't been working too well. The filters, you don't tend to get filters on a lot of modern pumps, on the low rider pumps. And that's another reason why you should always try and keep your pump well serviced because where you don't have these on the modern pumps, on these old pumps, they will filter any bits of swarf, bits of PTFE and stuff that gets built up in the tank over time. So you must take your tank off and give the oil a change, give it a good clean out, get any sort of gunge. Right, so let's get this motor off. So similarly to the, to the modern pumps, it's just two nuts on the back here. And you take those two nuts off and the motor should come apart quite easily. 10 mil spanner on those two. So they're just two long nuts bolt into the block. And the markings on these motors are interesting. So it's, we know it's 12 volt, but there's a, a 30 on I think the positive terminal and a 31 on the negative, which is interesting. I've not seen that before. I'm not sure what they mean. If you know, please let us know in the comments. So there's the two bolts to hold the motor in place. Again, very similar to the motors on more modern hydraulic pumps and installs. Now that is pretty firmly attached still. I'm guessing it's just a case of age. So I'm just gonna get a little knocking stick. Just give it a little bit of encouragement. And there she comes. Off. Now, on the modern uh, American style pumps, they have a spline gear keyway, whereas on these older style pumps, oh, it's splined on one side, look, but it's just a straight bar on that one with a straight bar in the motor on the other side. A common problem with these early pumps was that these would shear off once the pressure was starting to get too high and people were hitting switches and bouncing the cars. So that all seems to be moving quite well. Now let's get this motor apart and have a little look at what's going on inside here. Let's have a look at those brushes. How do we get this apart? So there's a weird little bracket thing that appears to be doing something. I don't know whether that's holding that on or what. Let's take it off anyway and see what happens. Ah, okay, so it's just a little cover. And we'll take that off. Maybe you can inspect the condition of the brushes, etc. inside. It's a bit difficult to see, but it doesn't really look like it's in that bad condition from where I'm looking. But I don't know how you take this apart any further. This looks like one solid block, so you must have to take the brushes out through this gap rather than this whole assembly being able to slide out. Now I'd be inclined to check these brushes to make sure they've got enough heat on them. Everything looks to be okay in there, the condition doesn't look too bad. Now these motors only ever tend to run at the 12 volt that they're designed to, so they don't get too much stick. It seems to be a fixed unit. This doesn't look like it comes apart. So I would be more inclined to leave that. I don't think there's too much wrong with that motor, to be honest. I think the issue might well be within the pump head itself, which we can take apart further. I don't know what this is. I've never seen one before on a pump. So I'm inclined to leave that as it is for now, but whether this has some sort of control element this side. I know it's got a spring clip in there. Maybe I could just take these off. Again, that's the same size. OK, 
Okay, so definitely appears to be some kind of valve. What it does, I have no clue. Seems like some sort of control module or something. Sure what it does if anybody knows let us know in the comments but it's obviously some sort of valve possibly something to do with the no return i don't know but that would probably need to be blocked off i'm just going to nip that back up so let's get this pump head off Close to the rescue these two nuts are holding it to the block and you've got those four that are uh, holding the pump head together. Whoa, look at the water. I mean, it seems to work. Everything seems to be smooth. So I would be inclined to say that it's probably just a case of the, the bad fluid that's not helping. And that if you were to just clean this and check all the seals, which seem to be all right, maybe change that O-ring there, and put it back together, fresh oil, spin it up. I reckon this pump will work fine. Everything seems to be in really good condition, apart from the oil, of course. And that's just a little rubber O-ring. Goes on there. Even that looks like it's in good condition. So essentially, that is the internals of an old school Fender pump. You will have a pressure and a return, I should imagine. This valve could probably be taken out, blocked off similarly to these two. Then you've got the motor, which is basically the same as any 12 volt motor. The internals will work exactly the same. We've got the brushes, the armature, etc. The condition looks okay. I don't know if you can see in there, but the condition of the copper looks all right. And the brushes look like they've got enough meat on them. So there's no reason why that wouldn't carry on working. So those are the individual parts. And the next step would be to bolt it all back together give it some extra some new fluid and uh, put some hydraulic lines on it and see if it will actually lift a ram look at that in there okay if see gravy anybody so that concludes the first part of this series i think well i hope there's going to be a second part of the series where we're going to rebuild the pump uh, maybe put it on a car who knows uh, worst case We'll get some hoses, we'll get some fittings, we'll get some valves, and we'll maybe hit the switch on the bench, bench test it, see if we can get a ram to lift and drop. And yeah, that should be pretty cool. So I hope you like what you're seeing. Please subscribe and carry on watching our stuff.